Oh, excuse me, I thought... Um, can I speak to Monsieur Maigret? Uh, I, I mean, the uh, police inspector. He's not at home. Oh, well, it's very important. Um, I wonder if you could ask someone when he's likely to be back. Uh, it's a private matter. Perhaps his wife would know. Well, I'm afraid even his wife doesn't always know when the inspector will be home. Come in. I'll see if I can find out for you. I say, it's... I didn't realise it's very good of you, madame. Well, who shall I say it is? Oh, I'm afraid my name won't mean anything. Well, if it's urgent, I could run round to headquarters. Oh, no, 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 it's not urgent. Well, it is, but it's really quite private, uh, personal. Well, I'll ring the office. Uh, perhaps you'd like to wait in here, would you? It's very good of you to take all this trouble. Oh, smoke if you want to. You'd ask him to give me a ring as soon as he gets in, will you? It's me. Oh, I forgot the flowers. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh you piece of stick. Oh, they're, they're lovely. I'll have to put them in just as they are. Oh, your coat's on the bed. Right. Be quick and wash because they'll be here any moment. I washed it the morgue. Ah. Oh. I'm going to give them artichoke hearts for, for hors d'oeuvre and bon de de morue. Salad niçoise before the strawberries. Do you think that'll do? Yeah. Now, Dr. Pardon will sit here. The Baron on my right and... Oh, here, let me do that. I don't see why we have to dress up for a general practitioner we've known for 20 years, even if he is bringing a Baron to dinner. Well, Dr. Pardon was changed the last mm. time we went there. Mm. There we are. Now, do you think we ought to have the candles? Ah, what for? We got a new shade on the lamp, haven't we? I ought to put oh. the truffles in the bloodlard. You know, some people don't like it. Oh, I think I ought to put this in the way. Have you seen my revolver? What, the presentation one? Oh, I haven't any other. It's in the case. You left it on the mantelpiece last Not night. Not in the case. Oh, but you showed it to Maitre Renard after dinner. Yeah. I didn't put it back in the case. I left it up here. Oh, but I haven't taken it. No one else has been in here, unless, well, only the young man. What young man? A young man who wanted to see you. He didn't say his name. Well, I left him in here when I went to ring you at headquarters. When I came back, he'd gone. Well, fancy oh, leaving darling, a stranger. Don't be cross. Well, it'll be a fine thing if he's gone and murdered someone with my revolver. This boy wouldn't murder anyone. He seemed a, a sweet boy. He said it was absolutely essential that we kept it a private matter. It was personal. I rang you, but you were out. Yes, I had an appointment. So they told me, the Blasserie Dauphine. No, there's no time for jokes. Look, what did this nice young man say he wanted? He didn't say he wanted anything, but he looked as if he needed help. Well, you know, after that article in the magazine, lots of people write to you for advice. Yeah. He looks as if he's come for my revolver. He couldn't know that it was on the mantelpiece now, 
could he? Mm, true, I suppose. Oh, they're here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Madame has gone into the kitchen. How are you, my dear friend? Well, I don't suppose I've aged much in a fortnight. You look a little pale. <clears throat> I have an apology to make. Baron de Grange isn't coming. Ah, well, at least we needn't uh, wait for an apparatus. You know, he's an odd chap. He suddenly turned up in my surgery a few weeks ago. <laughs> I hadn't seen him since our school days. Hmm. I didn't know you were at school with an ability. Oh, he's not really a baron. <laughs> Thank you, at least I don't think so. No? He's called that because he's always talking about his distinguished friends. A snob, in fact. Oh, but an amusing one. You know, he was telling me the other day about André Delteuil, the young deputy who made his name by exposing scandals. I know him. Aye, Delteuil, accused. <laughs> According to Lagrange, she invents the scandal first and then looks round for somebody who might be guilty of it. And they nearly always are. <laughs> Tell me, why is Lagrange so keen to meet me? Oh, a lot of people are after that article. Chief Inspector Maigret turns out to be a humanistic philosopher, a man who asks himself the question, who is the real criminal in the case? Ah, oh, sentimental rubbish. <laughs> Have another. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes? Oh, you can skip that. He's only interested in ammunition for a 45 Smith & Wesson. You have? Uh-huh. Young, blonde, wearing a blue suit and a striped tie. What color? I'll bet you ten francs he wants to know what color. Uh-huh. Well, you better get further details as soon as you can. Yes, he's on the warpath a bit. This is vital. Mm-hmm. Well, let's know as quick as you can. Right. That's all. I may be ten minutes late, but what's wrong with the duty room? Well, you asked that the inquiries for the purchase of 45 ammunition should be secret. Oh, in yeah. there, we're at full strength on the Algerian murders. Right. Oh, Delta again? Uh-huh. Who's he accusing this time? Who? Huh? Well, now, what about the 45 ammo? I'm afraid a young man has bought some. Hmm? At a gunsmith in the Boulevard Bon Nouvelle yesterday. Get his name. No, all we've got is he was quite young, blonde, wearing a blue suit and a striped tie. Color? Not known. Nonsense. They notice the stripes, they notice the color. Find out. Makery. Ah, hello, Doctor. No, I'm feeling fine. Why, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes, an excellent dinner. No, I thought you might like to know why the Baron didn't turn up last night. I went to see him this morning. He's a sick man. But apparently the reason why he didn't come to the dinner was because of his son. The boy has disappeared. Oh. Well, uh, is he seriously worried? Oh, I see. Well, can you give me a description of the boy? Yeah, uh, age, shape, colour, etc. Mm. Nineteen, fair, medium height. Uh, I suppose you know what he's wearing? Yes, yes, I asked that. He only has one suit, a dark blue one. Dark blue. The Baron wasn't quite sure about the tie, but he thinks it was red and blue, striped. Red and blue. Hello, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm very much there. Where do you say Lagrange lives? 12 Rue Popancourt. Right you are, Doctor. Thank you very much. Yes, I will. Goodbye, Doctor. You car. Do you believe in coincidences? Well, it can happen. This isn't one of them. I believe that the young man with the gun is wearing a red and blue striped tie. Red and blue? Keep looking for him. You'll find me at Rue Popancourt. The man called Francois Lagrange. Mm -hmm. to see him this morning. 
I'll have a look. <gasps> What's there? An eye. Baron Lagrange. Chief Inspector Megray here. I believe you wanted to see me. Come in. Thank you. Uh, please, go back to bed. Uh, Thank you, I will. I, I, I haven't been at all well. You should have sent up a card or something. I'd have tidied up. Mm. <coughs> please sit down. Oh, put them anywhere. Thank you. Well, I believe we should have had the pleasure of meeting yesterday. I, I had hope so, yes, but... You were in bed. Exactly, I was in bed. <coughs> when did you begin to feel ill? Yesterday, but I, I haven't felt well for a long time. Yes, Dr. Pardon telephoned me. I believe you're worried about your son. He hasn't come back yet? Uh, no. Pardon, I sh shouldn't have bothered you. It, it, it's unimportant. He, he's probably chasing some girl. Oh, I see. So you're not uh, seriously anxious. I'd forgotten that he's 19 and it's spring. Yeah. But uh, you did want to see me about something. You asked Dr. Parlon to arrange a meeting. I like meeting people, that, that's all. And I, I was interested in an article I'd read. Oh, yes. That was just some silly write-up by a young man who wanted a story. <laughs> Please make your apologies to your, your good wife. I don't generally behave like this, but I'm ill. I'm very ill. Please go. See what a mess everything is. I, I can't even offer you a drink. I'll ask the concierge to bring you up some food. You know, you ought to be in a hospital. No, 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 I'm not as bad as all that. Just... <coughs> Is this your son? Yes, that's Alain. I have two sons and a daughter. The others don't come to see me. Alain lives here with you? It's convenient. He works at an advertising agency. Oh, you've telephoned them, of course. Oh, what's the point? He'll come back when he wants to. It's just that... <coughs> what, that he doesn't usually go with women? <laughs> he had to start sometime. Yeah. Do you mind if I take this? I'll bring it back. Yes, <laughs> but from promise... Not to publish it in the papers. All right, all right. I'll bring it back today or tomorrow. No, 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 no hurry. Don't, don't bother. I may not be at home. I don't think you'll be out of bed for a few days. No, no, don't disturb yourself. Goodbye, Monsieur Lagarde. Interesting, wouldn't it? Why don't you go in? Tidy up occasionally. Yeah, I want you to get him some food. Soup and fruit and so on. He's a very sick man. He wasn't hmm? so ill last night. Okay. I thought he was doing a moonlight flit. He went out last night? Yes. He was fit enough to help the taxi driver carry his big trunk downstairs. What time was this? About ten. I saw them from my little window in the courtyard. Did you see him come back? Of course. Oh, of course. Tell me, why isn't his son here helping him? That's what I'd like to know. He hasn't been here for two days. Thank you, madam. General circulation? No, police stations only. He doesn't look like a boy who'd steal a revolver. No. My wife's very worried, very upset. This precious young man might go and commit suicide. Mm, that wouldn't be too good, Federal. No, it wouldn't. Whatever he does, I'm going to look a fool. The FBI of America present me with a special revolver with a speeded up trigger release, and now it's at large in Paris, fully loaded, with my initials on the back. I got a man watching the Lagrange apartment. We should hear about the taxis soon. There was a rank close by in the Rue Popinco. He must have yeah. caught the cab there, otherwise there was no way of him getting... McGray? Yeah. Oh, yes? I see. Huh, weren't he? All right. Well, you stay right where you are until that tin got attendant. I'm coming right down. 
One of the railway police traced the trunk to the cloakroom at the Garden Hall. Huh? They wouldn't let him have it without a warrant. <laughs> Come on, don't give him warrants. <laughs> The trunk? It's a trunk, but you can't have it without a warrant. We were able, hmm? Huh? Inside, Brad. What's that? Blood? You still want to keep it? You're coming to headquarters. But I'm ill. Is your doctor examine him? But you examined me this morning. What's this about? We found the trunk, so you'll be examined again. Now then, uh, uncover your chest, will you? <clears throat> That's right. Now then, breathe in. Out. In again. Out. Once more. Deeper. Out. Another one. In. Out. Yes. <clears throat> well? Well, you can answer your questions. Can he come to headquarters? I shouldn't like him to. Well, neither would he. Hmm. Did you kill Andre Delte? <laughs> Did your son? Are you fond of your son? What? Because if you are fond of your son, you'd better start talking. Because he's running round Paris with a loaded revolver. And the body of André Lotte was removed from this apartment last night. Removed by you, we have witnesses. All against me. All against me. Nobody understands. Don't hit me. I don't want to be hit. What did you burn in the stove half an hour ago? I won't say anything. I won't. All right, I'll tell you. You burned letters and notebook, didn't you? <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> You'll have to come to the police infirmary. <laughs> you got clothes? I won't go with you. I won't go. You need a shirt. You haven't got any. But... <laughs> <laughs> don't open that drawer. My children's. But uh, they've grown up now. <laughs> I'll fix an ambulance. <laughs> Mm. Well, yes. Oh, yes, of course, monsieur. I'll tell him the moment he gets in. Uh, do sit down. Thank you. I'll take a statement in case the inspector's late. Name? Gaston Grimau. Born? 23rd of August, 1916. Where? Clermont-Ferrand. Au oh, pétain. The minute 
that the secretary would like you to ring him. Sure he would. Oh, Monsieur Grimal. This afternoon he was held up and robbed near the Garde du Nord. Well, next door, please, look up. By a young man with a revolver whom he now identifies as Alain Lagrange. Delighted to meet you, Monsieur. Tell me all about it. Well, I was in the Rue de Merveuse at about five o'clock this evening when suddenly a young man rushed out of a side street and pointed a pistol at me. What sort of pistol? I didn't look at it very closely, you don't, when it's pointing at you. He said, uh, your wallet, please. Please? The gentleman. As a matter of fact, he was so shaky that I thought the thing might go off by accident, and so I... So you well, gave him your wallet? Well, what else could I do? There wasn't a gendarme anywhere, of course. Hmm. And then? He ran off towards the boulevard. What was in your wallet? About 900 francs and some very important papers. 900 francs. Very good. Thank you, monsieur. Is that all? Yes. Your wallet and the papers will certainly be found. Well, not the money. Not the money. This way, monsieur. And this is what we pay taxes for. <laughs> all cars and districts have been alerted. Good. Seen this Del Tay medical report? Yes, shot with a 635. So it wasn't your gun. 635? Mm. Well, wasn't the boy either. Well, my wife will be pleased about this. That's not. If he had a 635, he wouldn't have pinched mine. Huh? No. What's this? That? Scrapbook of all your cases? Yeah. Yours? Of course it isn't mine. It was found in the Lagrange apartment. By the way, it didn't all my cases. It's only the ones where I seem to be defending the accused. It looks as though someone had made up their mind that you were the detective they wanted on their case. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Luca, take this over to Rue Papancourt and see if you can find the gun that fired it. Right. Oh, there's another report here about yeah. some girl having seen the boy earlier today in the Ney district. Some girl, eh? Oh, yes, it's spring and he's 19. <laughs> L'amour. Oh, who is she? She's a housemaid to a Madame de Boulle who has an apartment there. Not very romantic. Oh, it seems he called there this afternoon. Madame de Boulle left for London this morning. Why, why, why? Well, there's one thing I'm sure of, you know, Luca. This is not political. No. Luca, before you start looking for the gun, two things. Find out uh, Madame de Boulle's address in England and uh, circulate Alain Lagrange's uh, description to all ports and airfields. Tell him to hold him if he comes through. Right. I'm going over to Neuilly, see this maid. Now, right, Luca, do your stuff with the ministry and the press, you know, cool them off somehow. Right away. Jean-Mier. Jean-Mier, get through to the ministry and assure them that the Del Tay murder is not political, will you? Better hurry or we'll have a lot of frightened old women wanting to call out the Republican Guard. Yeah. Let the press know too, will you? Good. Good evening. You woke me up. Oh, it's important. You go to bed very early? Haven't got up yet. Oh. What's your name? Georgette Renaud. What's yours? Chief Inspector Maigret. And your mistress? Jeanne de Boulle. Must have a cigarette. Hmm. Have you been here long? Ever since she came here, two years. Mm hmm. Who's she before? Rue Notre Dame de Lorette. She's moved up in the world. You don't like her? Couldn't like her. She doesn't know you're there unless she wants something. Mm hmm. She many friends? Lots. Not many come here. She rings them up and meets them in bars. Mm. Who does come here? Oh, her lawyers, Maitre Gibbon, and a man from the bank who discusses her investments. Is she rich? You've got to be to live here. Hmm. Yeah. Any other men visit her? Not the way you're thinking. The landlords don't allow it. The young man come here this afternoon? Yes, but not to see me. Have you ever seen him before? No, who was he? His name is Alain Lagrange. Something to do with old carpet slippers? Well, who? Carpet slippers. That was her name for Baron Lagrange. A Baron comes here? About once a week, but it varies. Could you pass me the ash tree? Mm. Last week he came twice in the same day. I can just empty it out when it gets full. Good idea, don't you think? Tell me, what did she and Lagrange talk about? Oh, I don't know. They went into her bedroom. Want to talk? 
you like to see it? How do you know it was to talk? Ah, from the way she usually treats him, like dirt. Even on the telephone this morning. You phoned her this morning? Early, I took the call. Must have been important, she started packing straight away. Do you know her address in England? The Somerset Hotel, London. Good. Is she in trouble? Would it worry you if she were? No. Feel about her like she feels about me. Mm -hmm. Nice picture. You interested in pictures? There's a safe behind that one. Hmm. It shouldn't be opened. It's empty. Empty? I haven't touched it, I swear. All right, all right. There is one thing I've done wrong, though. What? Uh... Well, you see, her bed's much more comfy than mine. So when she's away, I sleep in it. Does she go away very often? Every few months. To London? And Rome and Madrid and Brussels. Her cases are covered with labels. Mm -hmm. Does she always empty the safe? Well, she takes her jewels, but she leaves the other stuff. Papers? Yes, and a box full of cards with letters of the alphabet on top. Mm. Card index. Is it? She's got a desk in her bedroom, too, but it's always locked. Mm. Shall I show you? Well, I suppose I'd better see it. Oh, ah, Luca. Bedroom. Wait in the bedroom, there's a good girl. Uh, Georgette. <laughs> Georgette. News. This was found in the guttering outside Lagrange's bedroom window. Hmm. Good. All round fired. Good. And Le Bourget say Lagrange caught the seven o'clock plane to London. There. They hadn't been told to stop him then. He's in England now. Mm hmm. Luca, does a mother keep her children's clothes? My mother kept my first pair of shoes. For sentiment? No. For my little brother. Hmm. Hello. Headquarters, Mercury. Yeah. I want a booking on the first plane to England. I want some English money. And I'll be putting a call through to Scotland Yard, Inspector Pike. Yeah. I'll be back in my office in 20 minutes. Wants a cigarette. Oh. <laughs> What'll I do, Pedro? Well, I'll light it for her. Uh, <laughs> Fingerprint the gun. Mm -hmm. Telephone me in England. As soon as Lagrange comes to. Huh? Right. Oh, uh, perhaps you'd better look through Madame de Ville's desk. Georgette will show you where it is. Good luck. <laughs> After you, Mademoiselle. Excuse me, Inspector. My name's Grimes. Glad to meet you, sir. Oh, Grimes. Did you have a nice trip? Yes, good, thank you. Good. The car's waiting over here. Your luggage is being thank sent you. on late to the hotel. Uh, this way, sir. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable. Thank you, monsieur. So I'll call around later, pick you up as arranged. Why? All right, sir? Right. Goodbye, sir. Very good, thank you. Ah, well, it must be almost six years. Yes, yes. How is Moira? Oh, she's in the terrible state. She's just sitting for a GCE. 
What? No, uh, the school leaving examination. Your wife is still at school? <laughs> Moira is my daughter. Ah! <laughs> Margaret oh. sends her regards. Margaret, of course. <laughs> uh, Madame Megra is well, I hope? Yes, very well, thank you. Well, now, um, I understand you're not asking for my official help. Uh, yes, I want this visit to be quite unofficial. And uh, above all, I want no publicity for personal reasons. Yeah. Well, we've located your man, Alain Lagrange. Bon. Uh, he's booked in at the Gilmore Hotel near mm. Victoria. Uh, he got up this morning, had breakfast, and then went out. Went out? Well, there was nothing we could do to stop him. Oh, uh, by the way, I've put the reception manager wise as to who you are, mm. and I've booked you in here, room 604. Thank you. And Madame Debu? Room 605. <laughs> Magnifique. <laughs> well, now, what's the form? Well, now, the important thing is this. The Lagrange boy must not be allowed to meet Madame de Butte. Oh, what's the problem? Can't I arrest one of them for you? No, no. I want them to be at liberty because I must know that he wants to meet her. Yes, well, we've got pretty good evidence that he does. Uh, he's been phoning all the principal hotels in London asking for her. He started with the A's. When I left, he'd got as far as D for Dorchester. Hmm. Well, it should take him at least an hour to get down to Somerset. Why so long? <laughs> Well, by the time he gets four pennies for each call. Oh, yes, I know. And when you've got your four pennies, someone else has got your phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I must get back to my desk. <clears throat> oh, um, oh, look, uh, why don't we have lunch together? I would like that. Well, one o'clock? Ah, uh, we. Oui. All right, I'll pick you up. Splendid. Uh, there's just one other thing. Yes? This is a very delicate case. Oh, well, of course, I understood that. Uh, you did. Well, a beautiful French woman, Inspector Maigret himself. <laughs> beautiful? Well, all French women are beautiful. Have you seen her? Well, one of my men took up her breakfast this morning. Hmm. Oh, no, uh, 604, I believe. Yes, surely. Is that uh, with the tray. How long does it take to do laundry? Who are you? Chief Inspector Megray, Criminal Justice. Does that give you the right to walk into my room? Alain is here. Alain who? Alain Lagrange. He's armed. Did you cross the channel just to tell me that? Yes. He's searching for you. How exciting. I hope he's good looking. He's the son of Baron Lagrange. The son of old carpet slippers who visit you weekly in your apartment. <laughs> I see you're well informed. Andre Delte is dead. Yes, it was in the English papers this morning. Did Delte visit you? Never. Yeah. I may have seen him in restaurants, probably spoken with him. He was killed in Lagrange's apartment. Is there anything else you wish to tell me? What made you come to London? The shopping inspector. My passport will tell you I make frequent trips to London. And if you care to inquire, you'll find I always stay at this hotel. How well do you know Lagrange? Ask at any bar on the Champs-Élysées. Lagrange was a regular buttonholer. You couldn't escape him. Was he your lover? If he was, it was 12 or 15 years ago. It would be just about the time that his wife died. I don't see the point of this conversation. Do you know why his son wants to kill him? Does he? Hmm. You didn't know that? Might it be because you ruined his father? The Baron never had any money. I even paid for his drinks. There are other ways of ruining a man. You did business with him. Business with carpet slippers. So you're not interested in knowing why he wants to kill you? Well, you just tell me. 
for ruining his father, apparently for paying for his drinks. You're not alarmed? Not in the least. Now, if you'll excuse me, I wish to dress. I shall put on my smartest costume for this exciting young man. Very well, I warned you. Hello? Yes, he is. For you, Inspector. Thank you. May I go here? Yes. No, no, I'll be coming right down. Thank you, madam. For the use of your telephone. Call you were expecting. The foreign gentleman asking Madame de Bull is staying at the hotel. You can tell him that she is. Yes, I'm very sorry to have kept you waiting. Yes, she is staying here. Shall I put you through? Uh, no, no, thank you. Just tell her that, that a friend rang. He's gone. You know, I think that young man was in a bit of a state. It took a long time to put the receiver down. I have your permission. Oh, yes, surely, of course. See. Uh, Scotland Yard, please. Uh, Inspector Pike. No, Pike. Uh, Scotland Yard. What? What message? Uh, I cannot lunch today. Give me a line, please, would you? Give me a line, please. Give me a line, please. <coughs> Gars uh, Garson. Uh, waiter. Whiskey soda. Yes, sir. Sandwich, roast beef. Ah, uh, yes, a whiskey and soda and a roast beef sandwich. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Madame de Bourg. Nice Thank you so much. Thank Lovely you. morning. Madame. Yes? Hello? Yes, just one moment, please. Inspector Maigret, I called for you from Paris. Ah. Maigret? Hello, Baton. How's the roast beef? <laughs> we checked on the gun. It belonged to Del Tay, not Lagrange, but both of them handled it. Fingerprints everywhere. Yes, the public prosecutor wants to charge Lagrange, but the doctors won't let anyone near him. You see, he's out of his mind, just cries all the time and says he doesn't want to be hit. Yes, he's in a bad way. Oh, by the way, Georgette showed me the desk in Madame's bedroom. Huh? <laughs> and nothing else, Patron. I'm too old. Oh, a lot of dossiers on various people. Photographs that the press would give their eyes for. Everything's held up now. We're waiting for you to come back. Mm. You can't... You there? What's it like in Paris? Raining. My lunch? Oh, well, veal in wine with breadcrumbs, fried potatoes, coffee, half a dozen oysters before that, and, of course, my usual chocolate mousse with cream. Mmm. Au uh -huh. revoir, Luca. Your order, sir. Uh, Monsieur Maigret, please. Uh, Inspector Pike. Yes, I would like to. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Maigret? Oh, good. Yeah. Look, I'm afraid my men lost track of your boy. Yeah, but uh, we've got the woman taped. Yeah, she's shopping in Bond Street. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry you couldn't manage lunch. Perhaps you could have a drink together. In England? In the afternoon? But where? Where? <laughs> Good Lord, you can drink the clock round if you belong to enough clubs. <laughs> uh, I'll pick you up. Well, so long, then. Hmm? Oh, uh, au revoir. <laughs> Will you get me the manager of the Gilmore Hotel? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Gilmore Hotel, please. They're putting me through. Thank you. Hello, reception, Somerset Hotel here. We have a guest, a Monsieur Maigret, Chief Inspector of Police from Paris. He would like a word with your manager. Oh, I see. Speaking, sir. Well, just a moment, please. He's on the line for you. Thank you. you. Maigret, uh, you have a guest, Alain Lagrange. Has he returned yet? No, I ask, has he returned yet? Uh, Monsieur Maigret didn't quite get that. A Scotsman. Ah. Would you mind repeating it? Of course. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. No, no, I don't think you need worry. 
Apparently, the person you inquired about went up to his room after lunch, but didn't stay very long. Mm -hmm. And after he had left, a chambermaid discovered her pass key was missing. They want to know if they should report it to the police or not. Mr. Magre asked me to say the matter will be taken care of. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Hmm. Tell me, would a pass key from the Gilmore Hotel fit the doors of this hotel? No, it's most unlikely. Hmm. Unlikely also that a pass key would be stolen. Huh? Well, I'm afraid sometimes the maids leave them in the doors while they're cleaning the rooms. They're not uh -huh. supposed to, of course, but you know what staff are. We catch the matter, it's instant dismissal. Very interesting. 604. Please. Yes, certainly. 604. There we are, Mr. Megri. Thank you. Sorry to stop you. I left my key Laba. Laba? Uh, downstairs. Oh. Uh, could you let me in? Of course, Thank sir. You. What a nuisance for you. Thank you. Not at all, sir. Well, here we are at last. We're going to have a little chat. If you're holding the gun, just lower the muzzle, because I want to talk to you. I'm sorry I wasn't in yesterday when you called to see me for advice. I'm not going to offer you any advice now. You know what you're up to. I just want to tell you a story. Once upon a time, one summer evening, I was coming home. You've been there, so you know the trees on the boulevard. There's a crowd round one of the trees. I don't know who'd seen the cat first, probably some little girl who should have been at home in bed. The cat was crouched down at the end of a branch. It didn't dare turn round. It didn't dare jump. I was quite astonished to find itself where it was. Tricky situation for the pussy. It didn't know that people were only trying to help it. Poked at it with sticks, they shook the branch, they fetched ladders. The cat was out on a limb, and it was scared. But no one wished it any harm. I don't wish you any harm either. I know that you didn't kill Andre Dote. He was killed by a 635, 12 hours before you came to see me. You found his body in your father's apartment, and that's what you came to see me about. Do be careful with my gun. It's a special model, and the trigger's very sensitive. I know you're there. I know all that you've been doing today. You borrowed a pass key from the Gilmore Hotel, hoping it would fit this door, didn't you? He's still another one here. I've got that now. But I can hand it back. No harm done.
Now, let's pretend it's yesterday and that you found me at home. You wanted to tell me that whatever your father had done, he was driven to it by Madame de Boulle. They had an affair after your mother died and then she dropped him because he wasn't rich enough. But she could always get him to do what she wanted. We know a little about that lady. She lives a luxurious life, but no one's keeping her. She's a blackmailer, you know that, don't you? I imagine that she made your father do the dirty work of collecting the money while she sat back and spent it. That sort of thing can make a man desperate. You know, it's not entirely true what they wrote about me in that magazine, but your father's in the police infirmary, and I can't promise anything. It won't help him to have a murderer for a son. It's rather warm in here. I think I'll just go and open a window. By the way, I, I should have told you, I'm not armed. Stay, Will. You again. Stand still. All right, Alain. She's here now. My room is number 604. It's next door to this one. Go along there and tidy yourself up, and we shall have some dinner. But... Have you got a comb? No. Yeah. Borrow this one. Go on. Well, he must be as mad as his father. Or maybe too mad to be charged. Oh? Or to give evidence against you. Tell me. What did you and Lagrange talk about when he phoned you yesterday morning? I don't have to tell you. No? Not that it matters to me. He was in a terrible panic. Del Toe had been round to see him and had drawn a gun. There was a struggle it went off. At least that was his story. Probably true. If it was, it was the first time carpet slippers ever told it. Hmm. And why should a promising young deputy pay a visit on a broken down old wreck like that? Perhaps you'll tell me. Yes, I will. Because you'd find out some scandal about Del Toe. That wouldn't have been difficult. He was so good at exposing other people's scandals, he would have to have had some of his own. You put the squeeze on him for just how much you knew he'd pay, didn't you? You're a businesswoman, but you made one mistake. You underpaid your staff. The Baron thought he'd like to have something for himself. And he charged too much. The man's a fool. He's a simple man. It takes a clever person to be a successful blackmailer. Not too hasty, not too greedy. Capable of weighing up exactly how much anyone's name is worth to them. Isn't that so? That means paperwork. And paperwork means evidence. You've got nothing against me. Not enough to apply for an extradition warrant. I know. But when you come back to Paris, I'll be waiting for you. If I come back. You will. You're like that suitcase over there, labelled. Rome, Madrid, Florence, London. But you belong to Paris. You'll be back. Au revoir, madame. You know, we can go on doing this until 11 o'clock. After that, we have to sit on our beds if we want to drink. That's the law, and the law is very important. I, I took a man's money. Yeah, you have to go to prison for that. How long? No, oh, with the right explanations, not more than a month or two. By the way, was it you who made that scrapbook of my cases? No, my father. Hmm. He was so wretched, you see. She had driven him to this life of blackmail. I think he thought of killing her. And then when this other thing happened, well, I 
thought at least I could do that for him. Did you owe him so much? He's a fool and a rogue, I know, but when my mother died, I was only five and he looked after me. Not well. We were always moving into large apartments and then having to move out again because we couldn't afford them. Sometimes it came down to one room even. But he tried. He got me up in the morning and dressed me and cooked and washed my clothes. When I came out of school, he'd be there waiting for me. One man among all the women. My brother and sister, well, they were ten years older. They hated him and they left him as soon as they could. But I just couldn't hate him. Did you see? Yeah, I see. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I found this pass key in the passage. Thank you. And this is a pass key of the Gilmore Hotel. Yeah. Oh, and this belongs to Madame de Brieux. I hope no one's going to be dismissed. Oh, no, no, of course not. Well, you hungry? Yes, very. Right. Let's go and have some roast beef. <laughs> 